In a Newton's ring experiment, a plano convex glass lens has a radius of r equals 5.00 centimeter and is placed on a flat plate. The lens has an index of refraction n equals 1.52 and when a light of a wavelength 650 nanometers is incident normally, then 55 bright rings are observed. So uh, number of bright three rings is 55. And we know that the last one precisely is on the edge of the lens. So we want to find out what is the radius r of the curvature or of convex surf surface of this lens. So let's uh, record our question. So the r is what we're looking for. And we want to find out what is the focal length of this lens. So let's call this part A and then part B. What is the focal length of the lens? To solve for the uh, radius of the curvature of the lens, we need to use the phenomena of interference and especially that the last ring, last bright ring is on the edge. Why is it important? Because we know the radius uh, of the um, lens. Uh, uh, that means if it's if the bright ring is at the edge, we know the radius of that ring. Knowing the radius of that ring, we can find also uh, the thickness of the uh, of the air wedge between the convex lens and the flat uh, glass. And if we know the thickness, let's call it T, uh, if we construct a triangle, uh, this green one, you will see uh, we can use Pythagorean theorem um, to solve for R. So if this is the radius of, of the curvature, the uh, um, height of the triangle would be r minus t because this part was a t. Okay. And then Pythagorean theorem will give us r squared equals r minus t squared plus little r squared. So our job is to find this t. Now, because it's a constructive interference, and because we're dealing with the bright fringes, um, we need to use the um, um, condition for the constructive interference. Now to use this condition for the constructive interference, we need to uh, take into account two, two options, the phase shift and the path length. Well, if we look closely, we'll see that there are two places, two points in this um, in this configuration where the reflection happens. So when the light is passing through and transmitting through um, through glass, right? So it hits this point where um, it goes from. Uh, n glass to n air uh, where the glass is higher index of refraction air is lower index of refraction so inc inc incident ray is going to reflect from here and um, and then it will just go ahead and pass through transmit some of it through and then it will go from N air to N glass again, where would be a phase shift. Okay, so at this point, we will have a phase shift because it goes from a lower index of refraction to higher index of refraction. So let's call this point A and call this point B. 
And of course, our, our um, uh, reflected rays 1 and 2 will interfere. And let's just record this like point, at point A. Uh, there is no phase change. Uh, because N glass is greater than N air and it goes from glass to air. So for part uh, for point B, there is a half a cycle wave uh, uh, phase change, which is um, half a, a wavelength in phase. So phase, um, let's just write it, phase shift. And um, uh, and that's because at point B, uh, the rays are going from air to glass. And air is uh, has a less index of refraction than uh, glass. Now, considering the path length um, difference, which is 2t, and the constructive interference m lambda plus the net phase change of half a lambda, I will get m plus one half lambda here, where m is uh, from changing from 0, 1, 2, and so on. Now from here I can find the t that equals m plus one half lambda over two. The question is, what is our m? Uh, we know that we have 55 rings, uh, 55 bright rings. What does it mean, 55 bright rings that includes the one m that equals zero. That means our m should be considered to be 54 because that's zero, one, two, three, and 50, and so on, 54. That will make it 55. So be careful with that. Now let's plug in our values. We will have um, 54 plus one half times the lambda, which we had equals 650 nanometers, 650 nanometers. I'm gonna leave my answer in nanometers. Equals, divided by two, equals 17.7 .7 micrometers. Now that I have this value for, um, for the thickness, I can use it and solve for r in this equation. Now, before we use it, let's simplify this equation. So r squared equals r squared minus two rt plus t squared plus r squared. Now r's will cancel out. We have a two big rt equals t squared plus r squared. From here, big R equals t squared plus r squared divided by 2t. And let's plug in the numbers here. I'm going to convert everything to meters. Um, so for the T, we have 17.7 .7 micrometer to convert it to meters. That would be 1.77 times 10 to the negative 5 meters squared. Plus, for our R, we had 5 centimeters. Make sure that we convert this to meters. So that makes it 5 times. 10 to the negative 2 meters squared. 
um, divided by 2 times 1.77 times 10 to the negative 5 meters. Now if we punch this into our calculator, we will get this equals 70.6 meters. Wow, that's a, that's a very large radius. Very large radius. That means um, it would be almost not very clear if you look at the lens to see whether it is curved or it is flat. It's very difficult. Now for part B, to find the focal length of the lens, so we had our lens here, and we want to find the focal length. We know this radius, radius of this curvature, let's call it R2, and the other side of the curvature is flat. So this is R, let's call it R1, and it's an infinity because it's flat, right? So, and then using uh, lens maker's equation, one over F equals N minus one, one over R1 minus one over R2. This will give us 1.52 minus 1 times 1 over r1 is infinity minus 1 over then r2 in this case will be negative 70.6 meters so you need to review the sign convention for the lenses uh, and uh, when we punch this into calculator, we will get 0 0.52 times 1 over 70.6 meters. And so for focal length will give us 136 meters. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for more.